many think that if you improve your soil, that that improves it for weeds too, that you're automatically going to get more weeds because your soil is more fertile and not only your plants, but your weeds are gonna grow more. That's a myth and we'll tell you why in this video. Stay tuned. So if it appeals to you to learn more about gardening myths, things that you always thought were true uh, but aren't, then subscribe to our channel. We'll be dispelling myths all throughout and making these videos really interesting and important for your uh, gardening in your home garden. I'm John Valentino, I'm president of John and Bob's Corporation, and I'm a landscape architect and a landscape contractor, and I'm here with Chip Valentino, who's our treasurer and vice president, and now, um, as of this week, secretary also. And we're here at a garden very reminiscent of a lot of gardens we've been working on recently, where we're improving soil to solve gardening problems. Soil that does not have complex life in it, meaning in these videos I've talked a lot about life in the soil and I usually talk about complex life and that means more than just bacteria. So the whole purpose of our product line is to build complex life. So we're building all of those higher life forms. That impacts weed growth. It impacts dramatically plant growth and we're making those plants as healthy as they can be and we're making the soil drain as well as it can and everything about the soil profile and the tilth will improve. The other thing connected to that is weeds like nitrogen just like plant, plants like nitrogen and weeds favorite source of nitrogen is nit the nitrate form of nitrogen and different plantings than weeds they use some nitrate the nitrate form of nitrogen but they also use the ammonium form of nitrogen and we have a, a video that we're going to show you, a video in a video, uh, that uh, explains really quickly why this issue of the form of nitrogen is important and that by building the soil, you build soil that can better produce ammonium nitrogen. How does the soil food web suppress weeds? Weeds are a specific group of plants that grow really quickly and then immediately produce seeds. They have very short life cycles when compared to other plants. Like all plants, weeds need a lot of nitrogen in order to grow, but unlike most other plants, weeds thrive on a particular form of nitrogen called nitrates. Most other plants require some nitrates too, but they need more of a different form of nitrogen called ammonium. In a natural soil where no fertilizers have been added, nitrogen is readily available as ammonium. Some of this is converted to nitrates by a particular group of bacteria known as nitrifying bacteria. Scientists have discovered that nitrifying bacteria can only operate in a pH environment of 7 or above. With a balanced soil food web in place, soil pH can be prevented from reaching 7 by beneficial fungi that produce acidic compounds. And so nitrifying bacteria are prevented from converting the ammonium to nitrate. So now, ammonium is the predominant form of nitrogen available in this part of the soil. That means that weeds don't get their favorite food and so their numbers are kept under control, making way for other plants to grow. Here's a real-world photo where you can see the difference in weed growth after just one application of soil food web biology. You can clearly see the difference. So that video introduces the basic uh, backbone of our whole um, profile of products in that uh, we're trying to build complex life in the soil that not only addresses weeds, to some degree, it doesn't eliminate every single one, but it does address them and it should make weed pressures much more, much less significant. But it also addresses the health of plants, your soil drainage, the ability of plants to stay well, not get pest and disease, um, the ability of turf to not get fungus. So all of these issues are related to what's in the soil. So I've talked quite a bit about it, the importance of mulch, some kind of top dressing around the plants. Uh, very important in weed control. It can make it so seeds can't get down to germinate. Excellent for soil. It's actually part of 
uh, building soil the way we want to build it so that it has complex life also. On this garden you'll see really a very attractive mulch was recently added and people love this. This is probably the most commonly requested. It's a very fine uh, called forest humus. Beautiful color, makes everything look rich and beautiful and I like it a lot but I don't use it much because, in fact, I don't use it a lot at all unless somebody insists on it because the problem we have with it is uh, gardeners blow it all over the place and the wind itself blows it all over the place and water washes it away. In other words, it doesn't stay put very well and after spending a lot of money on a very important part of your garden, that mulch is important for soil quality and weed suppression. After doing that, uh, it could be gone in a month or two. So we use a couple other products. Uh, one that I like, uh, this is shredded cedar, which is much coarser and it knits together, really does a nice job of staying put. You can even blow right over the top of it without it moving. Wind doesn't blow it away, rain doesn't wash it away. You can order shredded cedar and get a really, really ugly product. I think this one's pretty attractive. And the key to that is this one is goes through the mill twice, so they called it double grind shredded cedar. And by doing that double grind, you get a little finer look. Another product uh, that we used that we showed on another garden uh, recently uh, on one of our videos, the, the video where we showed the finished product of the garden, we walked you through the steps of it, is, is this one, which is also coarser than the one in this in the garden I'm standing on, so much coarser than forest humus. This is a blend of um, Douglas fir, both the bark and the wood of Douglas fir. And again, it's coarser, it's, it's pretty attractive, and it stays put much better. So those are my two ch first choices just because they're a good investment. They stay put, you don't lose them, they do everything that top dressing mulch is supposed to do, and they don't walk away. So weeds, 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 big problem for a lot of people. Let us know in the comments all your weed challenges and we'll see if we can help you. So we're talking about ways to suppress and prevent weeds, but what if you still get some, which you're undoubtedly going to still get some. Uh, best thing is to pull them if you can. If you're looking for weed killers, um, the most popular and famous one, which it has its place, but unfortunately isn't good for soil and used excessively isn't good for people, is Roundup. The active ingredient is glyphosate. And the good thing about that is that when you spray it on something, a really tough to kill will, weed, it translocates through uh, the weed and kills the roots. And so could be that you need a minimum amount of it. Um, it isn't good for soil and um, I don't recommend using it. Uh, sometimes it's appropriate to use if you absolutely have to kill some Bermuda um, quickly and that will actually kill the roots and it's hard to kill the roots any other way. There are uh, some organic products that burn weeds. Avenger is one that's widely available, easy to buy online and it's made from citrus peels so it's high in acid. So the acid, you, you mix it with water and you just spray it on the weed and especially on sunny days, summer days in our area is fantastic, it works very well. It burns that weed quickly. In the winter it doesn't work so well uh, and if you don't have sun uh, on any, in any season uh, it doesn't work very well. Now it doesn't impact Bermuda unless you were to just spray it almost every day for a year because it doesn't translocate through roots, it just kills the top and you can't kill Bermuda by just killing the top, you have to kill the roots and there's some other weeds like that. So there's other, you can make your own weed killer out of vinegar, lots of recipes online, there are some vinegar products uh, online that do the same thing as the citrus peels of Inger where they burn the top and um, work pretty well. Worked uh, well in this garden. Uh, we didn't want to use uh, Roundup or glyphosate and so we used Avenger uh, quite extensively and uh, just burned the weeds. Our technique is we try everything possible without using any chemicals and then there might be certain situations where you have to use a chemical for um, a weed, a particular problem weed, or where you have a customer that 
requires it. Um, but the first step, obviously, is to build that soil properly. And building the soil doesn't mean using miracle Grow because miracle Grow does the opposite to soil. So that myth about making your plants grow and the weeds grow is true if you use synthetic fertilizer. The, the weeds will grow more. But with this different approach to gardening where we're, it's, it's a more sustainable approach where we're trying to change the soil uh, so that everything's healthier, we don't need insecticides and pesticides, and so that uh, plants have a way of not getting sick their own way is through the soil. So we, we go through all of those steps first, use our products like crazy or anyone's products that builds the soil, um, things like our products or earthworm castings or you know those types of things, kelp that build the soil with life um, are the key to that. And then um, included in that realm of things is mulch. So if we build the soil properly, we use, we're mulching uh, extensively. Uh, and then we go down the list and if um, that isn't working and we absolutely um, have to kill a weed, we pull it if we can. And if we can't, uh, then we spray with an organic spray, possibly that uh, can just be, the weed can be killed by burning it. Or if it's in a spot that uh, nothing else will work and we need to kill the roots, glyphosate is appropriate here and there um, if, if there's no other option. So another uh, technique for minimizing weeds, which I would prefer not to do and I try to avoid by all the steps we're talking about here, is a pre-emergent herbicide, so you don't even have to kill it. You just let it go dormant in the winter, you apply your pre-emergent and it won't come back. In that instance, it's probably one of the best ways um, to uh, kill crabgrass. Um, there's nothing um, less toxic than that, I don't believe. So a pre-emergent can work in the lawn like we just discussed, or you can work it in, you can use it in shrub areas and it, what it, it's usually described as killing weed seeds and Essentially, that's what it does, but it, it really kills the weed just as it's emerging from the seed. And a uh, couple of good brands that uh, we have used, that we use if we need to, but I try to limit it, is uh, one's called Dimension and another one's called uh, Ronstar, both good brands of pre-emergent herbicides. What we want to try to do is just keep making these inputs of things that build the soil. And even if we have to use something that's not good for the soil now and then, we keep it with the inputs and we should be able to build a really healthy, productive soil that has the right kind of nitrogen, that drains well, that allows plants to be um, defensible against pest and disease, and that makes your gardening as simple as possible. You don't need a product for everything because the soil is taking care of all the problems and making plants as productive as possible. Surprisingly, healthy soil is the first step towards minimizing weeds and suppressing weeds. And healthy soil is what our product line is all about. Go to our website, learn about the product line at johnandbobs.com. Speaking of myths, one garden myth that's written about in books and online is that young trees should be staked, and that's purported to be a myth. Uh, some of the myths, I don't agree they're myths, and some I think they're half myths and half not myths, but that's an interesting one that I think has some exceptions. If you want to see my viewpoint on it, you can go to our video, uh, How to Plant a Tree in Clay and Hard Soil, where I show proper staking. 